Today we're going to talk about the all key dash cam that I'll be installing in my wife's car. I'll first talk about some of the things I'm looking for, followed by an unboxing of this product and then afterwards testing the dash cam. This video is not sponsored by anyone. I purchased the dash cam with my own money and all the thoughts and the reviews that I have here are purely my own. If you're here just to see the actual dash cam footage, I do have that later in the video, so feel free to skip ahead if you want. My wife has a Nissan Murano and will be installing in the front and the back of the car. Why the front and the back? That's because sometimes the accidents happen from different directions and while it's pretty much nearly impossible to get the sides, having the rear facing one can get you double the coverage as if you were just to go with a front. And in this video clip, which happened a little while ago, I actually got hit from the back. I didn't have a rear dash cam at that time, so if the driver fleed the scene, which luckily they didn't, it would have been much harder to catch. When I buy a dash cam, I'm looking for five features besides price. Price obviously being important, um, in terms of pricing, I found this one that's pretty cheap on Amazon compared to some of the older ones that I've purchased in the past. The five different features I'm looking for in a dash cam when I'm searching online are one, having a small wedge design. This prevents people from seeing the dash cam from the outside and you have a less likely chance of having it stolen. Two, having a screen on the dash cam. Now, some of the older dash cams I've seen don't have a screen and they rely on you taking out the memory card and putting it into a PC just to view any type of video that's on it. And I feel like that's a poor design. Even if it's a small screen, you can at least preview some of the footage that you have. Three, loops recording. So unlike normal digital cameras, this will automatically delete the oldest file and continue recording once the card has filled up. Four, have a dedicated button to save a video in case of an incident. This is useful in case you get into an accident or something like that and you want to save the footage right away from being overwritten once the memory card has filled up. This feature will allow the dash cam to move the current footage to a different folder so that it's safe from being overwritten. Last, and in my opinion, this is the most important feature that separates this from other dash cams, is that the power has to be from a capacitor and not a battery. Now, the difference between the capacitor and the battery-based design is that the batteries won't last in extreme heat and cold. When you park your car in the sun or you park your car in the middle of winter, Batteries will have a hard time keeping the charge and you can potentially have corrupted footage if you're turning off your car and the battery power doesn't hold. Now this can be a big problem because if you do get into an accident and then the last clip contains the evidence and it gets corrupted, well that defeats the purpose of having a dash cam. The contents come nicely wrapped in a brown box. Inside there is a protected foam padding. On top you'll see the dash cam unit that is wrapped in a bag. Underneath that, there's some documentation. At the bottom, you'll see the mounting hardware and a decently long USB cord that powers the unit. Although you can't see it, there's also a 12 volt adapter with two USB ports that's in the same bag. Let's talk about some of the key features of this dash cam. As you can obviously see, there's an LCD screen behind the unit and the display angle is pretty decent. Going through the menu options, you can adjust the language. You can also adjust the resolution that's recorded, how long each segment of the video is. So when it breaks it down into multiple files, you can choose whether it's recorded in three, five, or 10 minute segments. I normally prefer a smaller number, so that way you get more files and it's easier to manage so you can delete the other files that you don't need. and also keeps the storage requirements to a minimum should you want to save any clips. You can also set the date and the time, which will be used in the file name. And optionally, you can put that information onto the video as a timestamp. You can enable or disable the audio recording. You also have a screensaver option. This is a feature where the screen will turn off and it helps you keep the distraction to a minimum while driving. I normally set this to one minute. You can also format your card. You can view your recordings. And if there is an incident, you can actually mark your footage. Now, this is a very useful feature in a dash cam because as you're going through the memory card, old files are being deleted and this will prevent the files from being deleted if anything happens. When you push the button, you'll get a yellow exclamation mark indicating that the file is marked not to be deleted. 
And finally on the outside, the lens tilts back and forth and holds position so that it will account for different types of windows. And just a little pro tip, if you need to install two dash cams, mark one of the cards as the front memory card. That way, if you pull out both of them at the same time, you know which camera goes with which memory card. To install the dash cam, we want to have this stick against the window, make sure the surface is clean, and then this will slide into the slot, kind of like this, and it'll be up against the window. Now, when, when you take this off, this thing will slide backwards, and you want to make sure there's room, so if you're putting it up against your mirror, which I highly recommend so that it's not really as obvious for people walking by, um, that way they're not going to try to steal your camera, uh, make sure there's enough gap between the back part of your dash cam and the mirror so that you're not hitting against the mirror as you're trying to take this out should you need to service the unit. To wire this, I'm going to have the wires run above here on the roof, down the A-pillar. Um, I'm probably going to take advantage of this weather stripping over here to hide the wires. It'll come down and then um, over to the center console. I'm not going to hardwire the unit. I'm just going to plug it into the 120 volt uh, socket. So the weather stripping and the roof hides the wire. And then it comes down this way. You see a little bit of the wire here. Underneath the floor mat. Out the other side, so you, you do see a little bit of it, but at least it's not really in the way. And then it's a little bit easier than hard wiring it, since I don't know how to solder. And it goes into the 12 volt slot right there. Now for the back, I don't want to have this stick directly on the heating element, so I'm going to adjust the size by cutting the adhesive so that it won't overlap with these. And since we're not hardwiring this, looking in the back, we did lock out a little bit because we have a 12 volt plug. Now just like the front, we don't want to have the dash cam right smack in the middle that interferes with the driving. I'm going to put it off to the side, but not too far off because this thing curves a little bit. And if you put it off too far to the edge, you won't be able to see the other side of the road. And here it is installed. We have this running down to the weather strip, just like the front. Comes down around this way, and then you can see a little bit over here. Um, get it in focus. You can see it a little bit over here. It runs down this trim, then down, and then you can see the bunch of wiring here. It's not the best, but it works. So let's uh, make sure that closing the door doesn't interfere with the wiring. There's a little bit of wire hanging, but there's some slack because of the door opening and closing. But the important part is that the wire is not crushed, as you can see. Um, so let's give it a try by turning on the car. And that's it. Make sure the lenses are aligned correctly. Make sure it records. Here is an audio test. I'm sitting in the driver's seat, and you're listening from Lights and Buttons. Now this video wouldn't be a true review without the pros and cons, so let's take a look at what's good about this camera first. So in terms of the pros, it's a pretty good build quality. Um, nothing in terms of the plastic is really um, wobbly or anything. It's uh, you know pretty pretty well built. Generally, it's pretty easy to install and operate. The uh, capacitor based power source is durable so when you go through the different winters and summers depending on where you live this will survive the extreme temperatures this also has a screen saver function to minimize the distraction while you're driving and also this is a pretty low cost compared to my dash cam in the acura which i bought for about a hundred dollars per camera 
This runs only for $70 and has very similar features. All right, and let's list out the cons for this product. Now, in terms of the number of items on this list, it's gonna be a little bit more than the pros list, but don't take that as this being a bad product. I really wanna drill into some of the small issues I ran into, um, and in a lot of reviews, I feel like they concentrate on the pros, but not really on the cons as if they were selling it, and that's not my goal here. First off, it generally does well in the daylight, but at night, it gets a little bit hard to see because in terms of the license plates, that's going to be a little bit washed out depending on how bright it is compared to the rest of the environment. You know, if you have street lights, it can help balance out the exposure. But if you have the extreme darkness plus the extreme brightness of a license plate, sometimes you can't really read them. So in that case, sometimes what I'll do is I'll yell out the license plate numbers so that the audio would capture that and I'll have the plate numbers even though you can't visually see them. Another factor is window tinting. So on this car, the rear window is tinted, so that makes it harder to see at night with the camera installed behind the tinted window. But with the dash cam, at least you can see what cars are involved and the sequence of events. You also can't customize how long the unit stays on after the engine powers off. So let's say you get into an accident, you can't say record for five minutes after the car has turned off. It just powers off everything. And this might be a consequence of the capacitor-based design. I'm not sure, I'm not an engineer, so uh, maybe the capacitor can't hold enough power compared to a battery that will last a few minutes after the engine has been shut off. In terms of the button that saves the footage and prevents any deletion in case anything happens, that button is the first button on the left. It's painted black just like the rest of them, so there's no really distinguished button to see. In my other car, I have a dash cam of a different brand that has an orange button if you want to do the same thing. That makes it much easier to see. And if for whatever reason you're trying to get the camera off, it's very hard to slide it out of the mount. For me, this is not actually that big of a deal. Um, these actually last few items aren't that big of a deal in my opinion. Um, most of the time, you'll be taking out the memory card instead of the camera itself. So unless you're doing, let's say, a firmware upgrade, you don't really need to pull the camera out from the car. Another weird thing I saw was that there's no start and stop recording. As soon as you power on the camera and if you're not in the menus, it's constantly recording. This generally is probably a good thing because unless you're talking about something sensitive in the car, you would probably want everything recorded. And if you stop the recording and you forget to re-record again and you leave your engine on and continue driving, you might be losing some video footage that you want later on. And last but not least, in terms of the loop recording options, Three minutes is your minimum amount of time, so if you wanted one minute segments, you don't get that option. Well, that concludes the review of this dash cam. There are different types of dash cams that are out there, so pick one that works for you. This may or may not be on sale, um, because obviously as time goes by, the companies will replace their products. So I'm just giving you my perspective in terms of what's important for this dash cams and probably other dash cams in general. But at the end, you'll just have to pick something that works for you. I hope you find this video helpful. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll see you in the next video.